So in this video, we are gonna discuss why the Knicks is gonna be all right, man. We ain't worried about the Philadelphia 76ers, man. I'm gonna tell you why I still have the Knicks in five. So man, let's talk about it. I played the boxing bells. <laughs> Yo, honestly, game three was like a boxing match. They hit us, we hit them back. It was definitely a physical game, but Listen, man, welcome to the channel. I am the objective fan straight out of Kings County, New York City's finest. And you know the vibes, y'all. Y'all, I want to do a little quick little video letting you know the objective fan is not concerned. If some of you guys might remember, if you watch the podcast on Mondays, be sure to check that out right here on the channel. So make sure you hit that bell icon. Don't forget to and you get all the notifications. To my channel. So I talked about this on Monday. I said, yo. A lot of people was like, yeah, we're going to sweep the Sixers. Very disrespectful. And I had to keep it real. I, I respect Joel Embiid, Maxie. I know that they're all-stars. Joel Embiid's an MVP, all-NBA level talent. They got too much pride to be swept. So I was not surprised, nor am I concerned. I am not concerned that about anything the Sixers is going to do in this game because I knew it was coming. So why am I so confident going into game four? Couple of different reasons why. I understand the physicality and the nature of the game definitely has increased, but that definitely favors us, right? Um, yo, to the point where Joel and B, he did, he got away with actually two flagrant ones. I saw Jay Williams on ESPN say he believes that the Mitchell Robinson pull down could have been a flagrant two. I could see that, but honestly, the foul that he did on Hartenstein when he needed them in the thigh, that to me should have been a flagrant one. The pull down on Mitchell Robinson, that would have been the second flagrant one. And honestly, he should have been thrown for the game. But yo, man, I'm from Kings County. This is New York City, man. Listen, man, listen, we understand it's going to be a fight. Right? We prepare for a fight. We prepare for a 12 round fight. Now, even though I don't believe this series will go any further than five games. And I'm, I'm, I'm ever so confident in that. I do like the fact that the Sixers raise the level of the physicality because that's going to favor the Knicks going forward into the next couple of games. Outside of Carl Lowry, Embiid is a dog. I give him that respect. Philadelphia has a whole bunch of finesse players like Tobias Harris, right? Batum gets a little dirty, but Tobias Harris, Buddy Hill. They got, a, they got a whole lot of guys that's more on the finesse side of things, right? Tyrese, Maxi, those guys. So before I continue giving you this sauce, make sure you're here this Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Game 4. I will be doing a live play-by-play -play commentary. You watch on mute. I watch on mute. Listen, we ain't got to listen to the old media slight. Oh, the Sixers this, the Sixers that. No. I'm going to give you that MSG feel the best way I can. Be here or be square. Join me this Sunday, 1 o'clock, Eastern Standard Time. Let's go. The physicality, everybody on the Knicks embraces that physicality, including our soon-to-be All-NBA All-Star Jalen Brunson, right? So that's going to favor us going forward. Another thing, too, now, we, I don't know the status of Mitchell Robinson. I'm dropping this video. I recorded it in the morning time, so there may be an update on his health status. But as long as Mitch is ready to rock and roll, we had that one thing over the Sixers that I think can help propel us over the top, and that is 18 fouls. Isaiah Hartenstein, Mitchell Robinson, and now Precious Jatura, who salute to Precious Jatura for getting in the game. Staying ready. Don't have to get ready. You stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And Precious did his thing in limited minutes. I'm not saying he had the most impressive game, but he got physical, he rebounded, and he played a little bit of defense. I'll jump into, a matter of fact, let's jump into research mode now. So yeah, we're in research mode, of course. You know the score, 125, 114. So I was talking about Precious as two, and yeah, you know, he actually was a plus six. Didn't have any rebounds. I said he had a rebound. I meant to say he had a block. But, you know, it's tough getting thrown in there when you didn't play the first two games of the playoffs and now you're in a, a really tough game, physical game in game three. I think if he has to play in game four, he will be more up for the test. But the 18 fouls, we're going to 
have to beat and beat up. Now, what I don't want is just the foul and beat for the sake of fouling, right? And I'll jump in and out of research mode. I don't want to do that because he's a great free throw shooter. But this is why I feel like we can be real physical in a man-on-man -man defense. My other point I want to say, because I took some notes of the game, don't double Embiid, especially when he's not in a threat to score. That really grinds my gears, man. This guy has his back to the basket from 20 feet out, trying to establish position, and the Knicks is running the double team. Yes, he was on fire. We'll jump back into research mode. He was on fire, right? So, Joel B definitely had 50 points, right? Plus 16 on 13 to 19 shooting, 5 or 7 from downtown, and 19 to 21 from the line. That's why we got to be careful with the 18 fouls. But I'm just saying with the 18 fouls, we can be aggressive on defense, but not just not a hack at MB strategy, just more of a bumper MB strategy, trying to push him off his spots, right? Being more calculated with our fouls, I felt like Hartenstein picked up five fouls. He had three fouls in the second quarter. I feel like he was just a little too aggressive in this game. But it was needed because, hey, yo, the man came out and need him. He gave him a, a, a tiger knee. Uh, salute to the Street Fighter fans. <laughs> you know, a sagged tiger knee. And so Hardenstein had to push him back, right? And then he was pushing Hardenstein, Hardenstein, yeah, definitely bumped him back. But I feel I still feel like we can't we can't waste these opportunities, these fouls on Joel and B. But those 18 fouls and yeah, he showed he could play on one leg and drop 50, but I don't see them winning the series, nor even coming back. I, I honestly I think that we have what it takes to close out the rest of the game, right? Another thing, too, another thing I noted, the first quarters are irrelevant. They were making a big deal about Knicks need to win the first quarter, Knicks need to win the first quarter, Knicks need to win the first quarter, right? Or come out stronger in the first quarter. The Knicks is a team that has to warm up and they wait to make that adjustment so they turn up in the second half. The Knicks is honestly threat in the third quarter because they have such a phenomenal record. I believe it was 39-3. and three where if they lead in the third quarter going into the fourth, that's their record. So we actually won the first two quarters last night, but we lost the third quarter. Once I seen us lose that third quarter, I knew the game was definitely a wrap. But the way these Knicks fought on the road, handling the physicality, the bad calls, Philadelphia 76ers, they doubled us at the line. I believe they had 33 free throws. We had 19 free throws. So they shot 15, 14 more free throws than us. And then when they talk about the last two minute calls, Coach Tiz, salute to Coach Tiz. He said it best. Yo, y'all worried about the last two minute report. What about the first 46 minutes? But look, we're not going to cry over the fouls like Philly did. We're not going to have our head bent in the locker room looking like we're about to cry, tearing up. Dude, we're going to come out in game four and smoke these dudes. By the way, I will be doing a live play-by-play -play, because you know if the game is not on MSG, I'm watching it and I'm going to do the commentary. You watch on mute. I watch on mute. We watch it together. I'll put the link in the description of this video. But you can literally see it's already scheduled. It's going down. Sunday at 1 o'clock. Be here on the channel. We're going to watch the game together. And yo, look, it's good that I'm glad we lost game because watch game four. We're going to come out and smoke day boots because now they're going to get confident. Oh, yeah, we got this. See? Going into game three, I knew they were going to have that, you know, mentality like, yo, it's, it's one to go home. We It's do or die. Going into game four, they're going to be comfortable and they're going to rest on their laurels. And that's why we're going to come back. Rebounds. Very simple. First two games, we dominated. The first game, definitely we dominated the boards. Second game, we won the battle on the boards. Third game, we actually lost the battle on the boards. I feel like that also played a role. They did a better job keeping Josh Hart out of the lane. He only had six rebounds. Let's jump back into research mode just to, just to make sure because I like to be accurate. Yeah, six rebounds. And then my final point being that I'm in research mode, Jalen Brunson got into the fray, even though he was a minus 14. See, the 39 points to me, I don't care about individual points. That's why I don't care if Joel B puts up 70. If the Sixers lose, they lose. You don't get credit for putting up points in a, in a losing effort, even the 61 points from Brunson. I respect his energy. I don't care about the 61. I lost. 
So he had 39 points. He stepped into the game. So you look at the box score. You'll say 10 to 12 from free throws, 13 to 27 from the field, 3 to 7 from downtown with 13 assists. Oh, man, Jalen Brunson was incredible. No, we lost. I'll take the first two performances in the winning effort than, than Jalen Brunson getting going and we lose. And also salute to OG Ananobi. Look at our starting five. Dante is the, the weakest link this game. But if you look at the starting five, they all came to put in work. I love the Isaiah Hartenstein hook shot in the mid post. And I love the fact that OG and Anobi is getting involved in the offensive end. You add all of these factors, and you look at the Philadelphia 76ers, who did get more production for more guys this game, right? Typically, it would be one guy or two guys with just 10 points. This game, they got a bunch of guys around 10 points. You know, Lowry with nine, Harris with eight, even though Harris is kind of weak, but Ubi had 15. And then campaign off the bench gave him that six-man effect with 11. So going into the next game, we can't really do the unnecessary double teams because I don't want to get these guys confident. So look, guys, don't be worried. I just want to drop this video it's really quick, really fast. Don't be worried going into game five. We got this. Trust me. I'm not going to guarantee a winning game five. I, str I strongly believe, though, that we... Because nothing in life is guaranteed, but we're going to watch... Game four together. Be here. Be square. And don't be worried. I love old media. Oh, yeah, the Sixers are going to come back. I love that. Keep that same energy and stay there. Don't change up now. Stick with your Sixers picks. I'm gone. So until next time, let's go. Yeah.